The story opens with a small, lonely child situated in a desolate and sweltering desert landscape. What is unusual is that the child is chewing on a human finger with blood staining his face. After that, we see a person named Wyndham in his car who has come to a desolate area of Arizona, hundreds of kilometers away from the population. The road for the car ends there. He goes to a high place with his backpack and his camera. Actually, today is the day when the solar eclipse is taking place, and Windham wants to take pictures of it. He he sets up his camera and waits there for a few hours until the solar eclipse happens and he snaps photographs of the eclipse. As the evening approaches, he starts going back to his car because he doesn't want to get stuck in the desert at night. But on the way, he sees a boy who is crying alone, sitting in this abandoned desert. There's no one else around him to be considered his parents or guardians. Windham tries to help him out and asks for his parents. Windham tells him to come with him, but the boy starts going in the opposite direction, saying that his parents are there. Windham follows him unwillingly. The kid takes him further away from his car. Then he stops and asks him for water. And finally, he walks away smiling, as if he deliberately wanted to bring him here. Here Windham changes his decision and tries to get back to his car, but it is going to be dark soon. He has now come so far from his car that if he continues walking, he will get lost in the dark. And that is what happens. He gets lost, and he tries to sleep under a stone in this cold desert. But it is difficult to sleep in such conditions. After some time, he hears a voice. Following the voice, Wyndham reaches a deep valley, and down there is a house. What is surprising is that there is a woman who is humming to herself. There are stairs to go down, so Wyndham slowly descends. Many strange objects are placed around the house. Well, he knocks on the door of the house, but the woman does not come out, so Wyndham goes inside himself. The woman inside neither gets scared, nor does she say anything when Wyndham comes inside. Wyndham tells her that he is lost and asks for a phone. The lady does not answer and continues making dinner, then offers Wyndham to eat dinner. This woman's name is Alina, and she does not talk much even after Wyndham explains his situation. Then Alina goes inside her room, saying that he should sleep now. Wyndham feels strange that this woman is allowing a stranger to stay in her house so easily. But anyway, Wyndham has no other option, so he decides to spend the night. At night, Wyndham notices that Alina is staying in the room in front. She takes off her clothes and starts cleaning herself. In the morning, Wyndham takes his stuff quietly as she sleeps and leaves. He comes out and sees that the ladder by which he came down here last night is no longer there. This place is very deep, and there are mountains all around. He couldn't see any other way out from here. Wyndham is confused as to why this is happening. When Alina wakes up, Wyndham inquires her about it. At first, Alina doesn't give any proper answer. Then she says, I don't know where the ladder is. They keep it here sometimes. Then Wyndham asks if there are more people up there, to which Alina doesn't reply. Wyndham starts taking pictures nearby. There are very unusual images made on the stone walls. In the afternoon, Windham tries unsuccessfully to climb the hill, but he is again forced to spend the second night here also. The next day, he takes a hammer-looking tool from Alina's house and a cloth with which he wraps his hands because the stones are very hot. During the day, the stairs are still not there, so he tries to climb the stone, but without a rope, it is impossible to climb it. He had climbed to some extent. Then he hears some noises from above, children's voices. Soon someone throws down a dead hen, which distracts Wyndham's attention, and he falls down and becomes unconscious. He lies there for the whole day. When he regains consciousness in the evening, he is in pain. He screams because the hammer had gone into his leg, injuring him badly. It was strange that Alina did not come to help him the whole day, and now seeing him in so much trouble, she came to help him and saved him from his leg. For the next two days, Windham lies on the bed, and when his condition gets a little better, he once again tries to get out. He starts shouting loudly if there is anyone up there to help him out, but no one comes. He angrily brings Alina out and inquires to tell him what is happening here. Who is she? Alina gets nervous and says, I can take care of you. I can give you food. So Wyndham angrily says, I don't want all this. I want to return to my life. When Alina tries to come close to him, then Wyndham asks her to leave. After some time, a boy appears up there and asks Wyndham if he needs any help. Seeing that boy, Wyndham asks him for a rope to pull him up. There is a little girl with that boy too. He asks Wyndham, my sister wants to know what is your favorite color. Wyndham feels very strange after hearing this. Well, he just says that he likes the color red. The boy leaves there, saying that he will find a rope. After some time, the boy throws the rope down and tells Wyndham to tie himself well. He ties the rope well, and then all the people who were there at the top start pulling him, and in the middle, they stop. 
Now Windham is stuck at a great height. Now he comes to know the truth, that in reality, they are the people who imprisoned him here. There were these five boys and a little girl, and among them was the boy who had asked for help from Windham at the beginning of the story. One of the boys urinates on top of Windham, and everyone is laughing at him. Then they start moving the rope. Windham gets scared. He shouts that he will fall. He calls Alina for help, and she comes out, and in her own language asks the children to stop. But by then, Windham had become unconscious, because his head had hit a stone. Alina brings him into the house, and when he regains consciousness at night, he gets up from the bed and comes out. He is still trying to somehow get out of this hell and lies down on the ground. The wound on his leg has still not healed. Alina comes out and calms him down and explains that he should now accept his fate. It seemed as if Alina also had the same fate as Wyndham. He understood that he could not leave like this, so he waited. To keep himself busy, he tries to grow some vegetables there so that he does not die of hunger. Alina takes care of him and washes his clothes, which means that now Windham will stay here. It seemed that those children who were above would send the necessary items and food for them from time to time, but they did not want to take them out from there. When Windham asks Alina where these items and food come from and who are these children, she answers, I don't know. Well, one night, Windham drinks alcohol to drown his sorrows. He and Alina have a conversation, and when Alina refuses to let him drink any more alcohol, Windham gets angry and says that he is not a child. He will obey whatever she says. He is a man. After this, when Alina takes off her clothes in front of him, Wyndham in his drunken state is unable to control himself and gets physical with Alina. This night passed, but still Wyndham had not found any way out of here, and time was passing by. In the afternoon when he was busy with his work, a boy came to talk to him. This was different from the rest. He asks, what are you doing? So Wyndham starts talking to him so that he can make him a friend. Who knows, he might help him out. The boy says his name is Lepis, and says, I am very fond of reading. Will you teach me? Windham says, why not? Whenever you want. The boy goes away after throwing a food item towards Windham. There was a picture of a woman in this house. Windham asks if it is her mother, and Alina answers. Alina's words are strange, especially when she tells Windham that there is a child growing inside her. Windham gets very scared after knowing that. He says, you made me do all this. But Alina says, no, we both did this. After this, Windham becomes very sad. The next day some birds spoil his plants, but Alina helps him. Then, that Lepis boy comes and asks, will you teach me something? Then Windham explains to him that, look, it is not easy down here. Why don't you somehow get us out? Then I will be your family. Lepis says, I don't know if those people are around. I can't do it. Only when they go away or sleep, I can do something. But then another guy comes there and takes Lepis away. Although Windham hated Alina, she was his only companion down here. So one night when they were having dinner, Windham told her some things about the outside world. One thing is clear from this that Alina has never gone out. She does not know what kind of world is there outside. Windham shows her some pictures, and when she listens to music, she likes it very much. That very night, the children perform a ritual of their own. When morning comes and Alina comes out, she starts screaming because she sees a tied-up dead body of Lepis. Seeing this, Alina goes crazy. Windham comes out. He was also very sad to see this. Alina says angrily, this was my child, and because of you, he was killed. She beats Windham unconscious with a stick and after that, she keeps Wyndham in a cage for nine months. He had become like an animal. She gave water and food to Wyndham, meaning she was keeping him alive, but did not let him go out. One day, a girl was passing by the valley. She is surprised and also quite nervous to see Wyndham in a cage. Wyndham tells her, please help me. As the girl tries to help, she is also caught, and those crazy children kill her in front of Wyndham. Seeing this, Wyndham's heart breaks, and now he has understood that he can never get out of this hell. One night he sees many many children, which means that a whole tribe lives here. The next day, Windham tells Alina that she cannot do all this alone. She will need him, but Alina says, I can do it, I've done this before. Windham is pleading in front of her, begging, I'll do whatever you say, I'm ready to be the father of these children, now I can't go back, my life is over, set me free, I also have a right to this child. Alina says, no, you are nothing. Windham asks, why have you kept me alive, either free me or kill me? He was repeatedly shouting about this, but Alina left from there. A few days later, the time came when Alina was about to give birth to the child. She was very nervous. As soon as she came out, she said to Wyndham, help me. This time, everything is different. Wyndham reluctantly agrees to help her. After a long time, he had come out of that cage. Hence, he was having difficulty in walking. The strange thing was that the ladder was present there now. If he wanted, he could have left from there, but he helps Alina, and she gives birth to a child, seeing which both of them are very happy. But then the boys come from behind 
behind and brutally kill Wyndham by slitting his throat. The boys say, we did this for you, mother, and Alina says nothing. A few months later, we are shown that Alina is now taking care of the child and Wyndham's dead body is rotting outside. This is where the story ends.